Hey guys, my name is Andy and I am here to make a video today about carbon ceramic rotor imbalance. Now this is an issue that is going to apply to very few people. In fact, it's really kind of a niche kind of crowd issue because not a whole lot of people have carbon ceramic rotors. However, if you have suffered from the carbon ceramic rotor imbalance, you would definitely know about it. It tends to cause a real bad vibration in the steering wheel or if it's the back rotors, the whole car specifically kind of shakes. When you look in your side mirrors, you tend to notice that everything's kind of moving around. It's a really annoying issue and GM pretty much gave you the middle finger about fixing this if you didn't have it done under warranty, which of course for people like myself, the second owner, third owners, anyone else that bought a ZR1 that was not the original owner kind of got stuck with uh, footing the bill on this. Now it's not a really easy problem to deal with and sadly there's kind of good news, bad news about the whole carbon ceramic rotors. Bad news is if you have an imbalance, you're stuck with it. You cannot balance these rotors once they have actually come from the factory. Now there are two different kind of rotors. So the first generation, there's literally no way to balance them. The second gen, they did make holes inside the hub of the rotor and those people could actually buy weights. Although from what I've heard, no one knows where you buy them from. Brembo doesn't even sell them, but they did make holes so you could try and balance them. And then even though there's only been two generations of these rotors, I kind of call it the second and a half generation. Um, they started actually counterbalancing the rotors by grinding out parts of the end of the rotor to try and off balance it. But those of us with the first gen, that's kind of what this video is mostly made for. I'm sure the second gens could do this fix as well. Uh, it should apply to just about everyone that has carbon ceramic rotors. Now this isn't just specific to the Corvette or GM. Anyone that's got carbon ceramic rotors that the dealer is not willing to do anything but buy you new rotors, which by the way, for this car run about $1,500 a rotor. So you got about $6,000 worth of rotors. Um, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, Porsches, um, doesn't matter what your make is. If you've got carbon ceramic rotors, this is a band-aid fix I'm gonna talk about that we can do here. Um, it is one that kind of seems kind of janky when you first hear about it, but it is a guaranteed surefire way to make sure that you get rid of the vibration. Let's go ahead and dive into the details right now. I'll kind of explain a little bit more of this. So just a little bit of backstory, I wanted to go in real quick before I actually jump into the fix. Um, GM did go ahead and come out with carbon ceramic brakes for the ZR1 for the 2009 model. So in 2008, they first started making them. They outsourced them to, of course, Brembo. Brembo is the one that actually makes them. And if we're really pointing the finger, ultimately, Brembo is the one that did not balance them correctly. It is just a GM sourced company. And it just so happens GM doesn't really care or stand by their own suppliers, which is why everybody points the finger at them. But ultimately, it does come down to the fact that Brembo is the one that is not willing to balance these properly, is not willing to actually help you out or really do anything about it. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and show you real quick the difference in the generations. Um, this is a first generation rotor. This is a 2011 ZR1 it came on and it still had the first generation rotors. I was told it was somewhere in the 2011 year that they went to the second generation rotors. The way you can always tell very quickly if you have first gen or second gen, here, 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 basically between all of these, you would see a hole drilled all of these and it's a machined hole that's made to scroll in little bolts that basically go here and it would help to offset the and counterbalance the weight on the other sides. As you can see, mine doesn't have it, so that's why we kind of had to jump into a little bit of uh, the fix here. But I wanted to go ahead and show you the difference in these rotors. If you have this style, you're probably going to be the one that benefits the most from this just because you really had no other options on how you could go about this. Okay, so the very first step that you're going to have to take to do this fix, number one, the rotors have to come off of the vehicle. So the first thing you got to do, obviously, is jack the car up and put jacks under it in the correct position. Um, the other thing is you got to take the calipers completely off. Um, taking the calipers off isn't extremely difficult. However, they do get torqued back on to 100 and uh, I think it's 129 foot pounds. So it takes a little bit of heft to put them back on. But again, not difficult. Two bolts hold them in the back here and here on the other side. And then you got a banjo bolt. Um, that's pretty much all you got to do. To be honest, if you're not removing the calipers completely, 
you can always just uh, take the bolts out um, the mounting bolts and then leave the banjo bolt on the whole reason i took everything off here is i'm having the calipers powder coated yellow so um, it made sense just to tackle this at the same time but it is not necessary to actually take the banjo bolt off which then does require bleeding the braking system however once you get that done we get to the point where you uh, just have the rotor exposed here now the first thing you want to do before you go any further um, you're obviously not going to be able to tell which side is out of balance if you've never had your rotors off before. So this part um, you are going to have to do, but it's not as big of a deal which one you choose. Just choose one of the lugs here that you're going to uh, go ahead and just paint black. As you can see, I painted this black. Um, I went ahead and put an arrow on the inside here. As long as you're inside this margin here and you're not out here, none of what you write in here is going to be visible um, from the outside of the car, except if the wheels are off. So you can pretty much write whatever you want. Just make some sort of symbol here, arrow, I have a V, something like that, that shows that this is always going to be the lug that this part of the rotor goes on. What we're doing is basically indexing these two together so that we always know when we put them on, they're going to be in the same position. Indexing the rotor to the actual hub itself is not going to be the important part. The important part is going to be the indexing the rotor to the wheel, which we're going to cover in the next step here. But I did just want you to do this. Before you go ahead and take the rotor off, this is pretty much the very first step you just get it done it makes the uh, the latter steps a little bit easier here so we'll go ahead and cover the next step in just a second okay so now once we've gotten to this point I've got the rotor off uh, got the wheel off it's gonna go on and what I've got here is a hub centric wheel spacer now it's extremely important when you buy a spacer that you have to make sure it's hub centric and not a lug centric rotor this ring right on the inside this is extremely important because it makes sure that the spacer is centered um, perfectly hub centered to the rotor when you bolt this all together so what we're going to do here in just a second um, i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to place the rotor on top and it's going to line up perfectly with the spot that we made now notice got that spot here that is uh, on the lug where that was centered and you might not be able to tell from here, but the, um, the valve stem over in the corner here is sticking out. I want this lug, this hole here, to always be lined up with the same hole that goes towards the valve stem. So you go ahead and just place that in there like that. Um, you also can't tell because of the angle of the camera, but at this point when I originally did this, I made a mark right here on the rotor, and then I extended the mark inside into the opening of the wheel. Once you get to do that, then you always know this is the index position that this is going to be. Now, you could also use the outside position, which I did mention is going to be this always goes to the valve stem. But when it's upside down um, and you can't actually see that V sign, you could obviously always make just another one on this side. I just did a little bit different because I was kind of just taking it one step at a time when I made this. You could, like I say, make that. I just made a mark. Whole point is when you're looking the rotor from the back forward, you always want to make sure that you can tell exactly where they line up. Now, once you go ahead and get these lined up here together, you're going to go ahead and take the spacer, which I should have taken these lugs off already, but you're going to take the spacer and we're going to place it right in the middle here. Just goes right in the middle. Now, it is going to go ahead and hold the rotor in the very center of that. And once we go ahead and bolt it down, since the actual lug nuts make the wheel lug centered, it will go ahead and line up the wheel with the rotor and the spacer correctly. Now, I did want to also mention the spacer. I believe this is an inch and a half or at least an inch and a quarter spacer. I would definitely not go um, less than an inch and a quarter. I would suggest the inch and a half spacer for this because the whole point is you want the spacer to stick out further than anything on the back side of this because what we're going to essentially do is take the entire assembly of the tire, the wheel, and the rotor, and you're gonna put it all on a wheel balancing machine together. That way it will spin as a whole, and then we're gonna get the total imbalance of the entire rotating assembly. So again, you wanna make sure that the spacer that you get here is wide enough to stick out. I will go ahead and put a link in the description of the spacer that I bought. I bought this off of uh, Amazon, um, it was specific, obviously, to this uh, model of the Corvette here, but it's really important that you make sure you get the right spacer and that you get the hub center. I believe this ran for two of these. It was 45 bucks, or you'd get a set of four of them for like 30 bucks more. 
I think it's definitely worth the investment just to get all four. I basically did all four of these, had all four of these assembled, and then once you take it to the tire um, balancing, wherever you went for that, they can just go ahead and do it all without really entering any intervention from you. You don't need to do anything once you get there. So I would definitely suggest try to get all four of them, but if you wanna save a couple bucks, go ahead and just get two. Obviously it doesn't matter. I really was happy to spend $80 versus $6,000 to deal with these rotors, and this has actually worked absolutely perfectly. So once you get to this point, um, you go ahead and bolt the whole assembly together. Again, you will make sure that you tighten down the lugs. Um, I don't think there's obviously a spec for this because this is kind of just do-it-yourself issue. I torqued all the lugs down to 50 foot-pounds, and that did perfectly center uh, the rotor to the wheel and uh, it did work perfectly with the lug centering um, once you get everything tor torqued down it will be perfectly centered the rotor the spacer and the wheel will all be together perfectly you just go ahead from that point you balance the rotors um, by balancing the wheel and you just do a dynamic balance not a static balance but a dynamic and just like a normal balance you will come back once they're done everything will be perfect and that is why it's extremely important that you always index these together from this point. This rotor always needs to be in the exact same position to the wheel as it is now when you balance. So anytime that you go ahead and take it apart, you need to make sure that the wheel valve stem is lined up with that lug nut that we went ahead and marked. Um, over on the car, that black mark we made on the lug, that is going to always be the part that the valve stem is lined up with when you put it together. So again, to reiterate, you go ahead and just put the rotor on the hub. You make sure that mark we made on the rotor is always on the black mark on the, uh, the lug. And then you bolt that down. You go ahead and put the wheel on so that the valve stem is lined up again with the black mark on the hub. Once you put it all together, you'll have a perfectly rotating assembly and it'll be smooth as ice. This is the one guaranteed fix that there's no way for this not to work. The only downside obviously with this issue is that um, you have to remove the rotor to do it. So anytime that you change wheels, anytime you change tires, anytime you get a flat tire, basically anytime that something has to happen where any of the factors on the wheel or the, uh, the rotor or the tire change, you have to do this process again. It really sucks, but it sure beats $1,500 per rotor if that's what you want to go with. If you're made of money, more power to you. Supposedly, the new rotors are balanced better from the factory. Um, to me, it just it definitely wasn't worth the money when I found out there was a fix for it. There is also a TSB out that Aston Martin made, um, a way that they attempted to go ahead and do something similar. I tried that TSB that basically tries to counterbalance the wheel to the rotor and uh, it does have some fancy trickery. I tried that method first and it didn't work for me and I did it completely perfect. You are more than welcome if you can track it down. I might even throw the link in the description for that TSB to give that a shot. Um, you basically go ahead and find out with the rotor on the balancer by itself how much the rotor is out of imbalance and then you can always just counterbalance the wheel to however much the rotor imbalance is. The downside of that is that the machines that you do this balancing on are tire machines and a lot of them are not sensitive enough or not able to properly uh, balance a rotor just because there's not enough rotating mass and it's not ultimately what the design uh, the design for the machine was. Um, I think that's a lot of what the issue was when I tried to do it so I ended up just aborting that idea and went from here directly from there. This has worked perfectly smooth as ice i mean i cannot even describe how much better it feels to actually have a car that feels like it's riding on circles instead of um, essentially squares so i did realize after uh, finishing that last part i might have kind of jumped over some of the most important parts here and that is definitely the assembly of putting it back together i just want to make sure i'm completely clear on that once the whole thing is balanced you have it back, the wheel weights are on, everything is good to go. I'm gonna quickly run down the procedure of putting it back together just to make sure you get it right. Now, just again to reiterate, I have got the valve stem about down there. So the mark that I made on the rotor is on the other side right here. So I'll go ahead and take the spacer off. And uh, remember, the rotor is now balanced to the wheel at this exact position. So when I go ahead and pull the rotor up, you can see my mark is right there. 
So it is lined up perfectly. Uh, the V is lined up with where the valve stem goes here. So um, from that point, we will go ahead and we'll go, uh, we'll go place it on the hub here and uh, I'll show you from there how you're putting it all back together. So as mentioned before, I do have our uh, rotor, which is now perfectly balanced to the wheel. We're going to put it right back together in the exact same position it was. Um, GM included some of these. Uh, there were two of these that were on here. These are not a must to put back on, but the reason they put these on is from the factory when it's rolling down the assembly line, it keeps the rotors on when there's no wheels on. Some people throw these out. I think they're nice just because it does secure the rotor down so that you don't need to worry about it falling off at times like this when you're doing this stuff. They're not a must. Um, they're a little bit of a pain to initially take off, but once you get them off, um, a lot of people throw them away. I just keep them on because there's no use in really throwing them out. They are still useful for this very reason. So you go ahead, make sure we got that lined up here, and then we go ahead and roll the wheel back on over. And remember, we went ahead and we lined up the valve stem down here, the very bottom, which isn't, actually in the picture, but the valve stem here is going to go on the hub here so that the valve stem is right out here. So you just go ahead and line that up like so. That hub right there. And that is exactly how that's going to go on. Once that's on, you've basically um, worked a Band-Aid fix around this. So it, uh, it's going to fix your, your imbalance issue. Again, the reason we say it's a Band-Aid fix is because Obviously, if there's any other issues with your wheels or tires or rotors that have to be adjusted, you have to do this whole procedure again. Now, it, it does fix the imbalance. I'm more than happy with it because realistically, how often are you going to have to change tires or wheels? Uh, maybe once every two or three years, roughly, maybe even longer if you just use them for cruises. But it is an extremely useful fix. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to mention. Uh, you can like this video, dislike, as I usually say. I don't really care. I'm just doing this to try and help other people out. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll try and answer as best I can, but otherwise, you guys take care. Have a good one.